Good evening, Lady Joan. Good evening. Yeah, my name's uh, my name's Tony. It's nice to be here. I've just come back from a spa holiday. Yeah, which was shit. <laughs> yeah, it was just a week working in a little supermarket. <laughs> Not what I was expecting, to be honest with you. But yeah. I know my name's Tony. My motto in life, Lady Joan, is always give 100%. Everything I do, I like to give 100%, which makes blood donation quite tricky. <laughs> <laughs> my, dad's, my dad's motto in life was never a borrower nor a lender be, which is why he lost his job at the British Library. So it's nice to be here, nice to be here. I've had a weird day today, I'll be honest with you. Woke up this morning. Woke up this morning, had bubble and squeak for breakfast. And now I've got to buy the kids two new hamsters. And I went to the garden centre today as well. Went to the garden centre, just spent a couple of hours standing in the middle of my garden. <laughs> so, so I'm quite happy, Lady Joe. I got, I've got a new girlfriend. Hey, hey, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, my new girlfriend's kinky. Yeah, or as she prefers to say, she's got a twisted spine. Love at first sight, love at first sight when I met her though, because I met her I met her while she was working at a zoo. Yeah. There she was, covered in monkey shit. Straight away I thought she's a keeper. When I met her, when I met her, she said she wanted a fairy tale romance. So, being a romantic, I locked her in a tower <laughs> and made her sleep with seven dwarfs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was a hell of a weekend. I tell you, was, uh, so, so now my girlfriend, my girlfriend's got got four kids. Give us a cheer if you got kids. Someone over there, very happy to be away from their kids. <laughs> but no, I haven't got any kids of my own, but she's got four kids, so I'm, I'm basically, I'm a stepdad now. Have we got any step-parents in? Yeah. Got a few step-parents. I don't know if you'll agree, you'll agree with me, but uh, I found that being a step-parent, being a step-parent is a bit like being a police community support officer. <laughs> yeah, PCSO. Yeah, plastic policeman, yeah. Because basically, as a step-parent, you're like a PCSO because you look like you've got authority. But when it all kicks off, <laughs> no one listens to a word you say. <laughs> and basically, you, you're useless until backup arrives. <laughs> that's, that's the way that works. So, yeah, so no, I've ne never been good at relationships, so, Lady Joan. I've, uh, I've been terrible at relationships. I was single for ages before I met my girlfriend. Single so long, got so lonely, so desperate. In the end, I made myself a Lego sex doll. And I tell you what, I loved it a bit. <laughs> Although we had a very painful breakup. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I lived on a houseboat for a little while as well. Yeah, I was uh, seeing the girl next door, but eventually we drifted apart. <laughs> So, so we got we got we got students in. Have we give us cheer for students or at college? Yeah, hey, loads of students, brilliant. So I, I I did a lot of studying when I was younger. Actually, I actually studied to become a locksmith. Yeah, I uh, studied at Yale. <laughs> mm. 
I tell you, that opened a lot of doors for me. I tell you. <laughs> I actually, no, actually, I, st I studied medicine at university. I did study uh, medicine. You'll be relieved to know that I failed my medical degree, though, because I made a real mess of my human dissection. Yeah, that was, uh, that was all topsy-turvy. <laughs> did learn a few things while I was there. I learned a bit about blood. I don't know if you know this, but the most common blood group in Taiwan is Taipei. Most common blood group amongst depressed people, B negative. <laughs> amongst optimists, of course, B positive. <laughs> and the most common blood group amongst dyslexics, type O. Also, uh, also found out about the medical condition gangrene. You've all heard of gangrene, yeah? Apparently that was first discovered in Newcastle by a Geordie doctor. Yeah, he was looking at a bloke's leg. Went, I don't know what it is, but it's gangrene. <laughs> so, have, we, have we got any Geordies in tonight? I love a Geordie. Have we got Geordies? Ah, oh, brilliant. My best mate's a Geordie, he's fantastic. He told me the other day that he was good at flirting. Yeah, but when I threw him in the pool, he sunk. <laughs> so so I, I do get, I get easily confused, ladies and gentlemen. I get easily confused. For instance, someone told me this recently. You may have heard this. Someone told me that 40 is the new 30. Have you all heard this? Yeah, 40 is the new 30. But you try explaining that to a speed camera. Went into a bookshop recently, this confused me, right in the travel section, I had a book, it was just called 101 Places to Visit Before You Die. Yeah, didn't suggest a hospital. <laughs> do a lot of travelling, doing this job, do a lot of travelling, and uh, I, I love travelling, it's brilliant, broadens the mind, everything, but I'm not a fan of Germany, I'm afraid, ladies and gentlemen, not a fan of Germany. I had a bad experience there as a child, on a family holiday when my dad nearly choked to death on a German sausage. <laughs> and after that, we feared the worst. <laughs> I like the way when I said that my dad nearly choked to death on a German sausage, some of you made up your own jokes to that one, didn't you? Uh, <laughs> didn't go as rude as you thought they did, you? Yeah. I don't really do a lot of rude jokes. I've, I've written a couple of rude jokes. So do you want to hear a rude joke? Yeah. Here you go, because uh, here you go then. To all the people, to all the people that said I couldn't write a joke about Bukaki. <laughs> yeah. Ha! In your face! <laughs> <laughs> is someone explaining what Bukaki is over there? Uh, ladies, and gentlemen, and ladies and gentlemen, when I was asked when I was asked to do a charity gig for the rehabilitation of sex offenders, yeah, I was touched. <laughs> and one of my previous jobs, ladies and gentlemen, one of my previous jobs was working at the Rampant Rabbit Factory. Yeah, we had a brilliant motivational slogan. It was, uh, if you build it, they will come. <laughs> a, lot of men, a lot of men find Catwoman sexy as well, don't they? Yeah, but I think that's just because they've never seen her in next door's garden. <laughs> burying her own shit. So I do get confused, like I said, I said that already. I have a lot of questions as well, Lejo, and a lot of questions that keep me awake at night. Uh, questions like, can you get acupuncture to cure pins and needles? 
Is Cajun chicken the opposite of free range chicken? <laughs> Is cured pork actually a healthy pig? <laughs> Do vibrators come with a list of dildos and dildos? <laughs> Oh, th thank you very much, thank you very much. I think that was about eight people clapping. That was, uh, that was good. That was just the right amount of clapping for that joke. That was good. So, so, <laughs> so no. one of my biggest questions, though, right, this genuinely keeps me awake at night, is uh, what to call the underneath of an elephant, right? What, what, is, what is the technical term? What is the technical term for the underneath of an elephant? What would, anyone, what would you say? What would, what would you say? Say, say stomach? Yeah, stomach. Some people say stomach. Some people say belly, underbelly, torso, abdomen. No one really knows, do they? There's no agreed term for the underneath of an elephant. No, it's a huge grey area. <laughs> well done for sticking with it. That was a long build-up for that punchline. Well done. I do love my animals, though. I love animals. I've got a cat and a dog, ladies and gentlemen. Give us a cheer if you've got a cat. Yay! Give us a cheer if you've got a dog. Ah. Oh, you're more my kind of people. I much, I much prefer the dog, I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm not really a cat person. I'm starting to get fed up with the cat's constant scratching. I'm beginning to wish I'd never taught it to DJ. But I love, I love my dog, I love my dog. I've got a rescue dog, which is lovely, isn't it? Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, except when she gets called out in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, to the woman, to the woman who asked me if I could do an impersonation of Sylvester Stallone, and I said, I'll be back. I apologise for giving you the wrong impression. <laughs> Here's a bit of advice as well. Never get into an argument on the moving stairs in a department store. No, because that can escalate very quickly. <laughs> and here's the thing. If we've got any budding criminals in tonight, if you're ever going to commit a robbery, ladies and gentlemen, do it dressed as a handbag. <laughs> yeah, because that way you can only be charged with being an accessory. So if you're not enjoying this at the back there, don't worry, there's only five more minutes of this shit. It's fine, it's good. It's fine. <laughs> so, so, yeah, what else, what else have I been up to? I'm trying to get fit at the moment, trying to get fit. Uh, I've signed up for a gym, went down the gym today, jumped on the cross trainer. Although, to be fair, he wasn't cross before I jumped on him. <laughs> And I'm quite proud, actually, this year, ladies and gentlemen, because I was actually asked this year if I'd run the London Marathon for charity. But I'd say no. Yeah. Mainly because I've no experience of organising an event that big. <laughs> Don't think I can handle the admin. <laughs> but I'm going to leave you lovely people in a moment. I'll tell you a quick story, because I've been doing a lot of travelling recently, and I was feeling a bit low energy today. I was feeling a bit tired. So I went today, I went and had a coffee enema, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if you don't know what a coffee enema, it's like a normal enema, but basically you get a cup of coffee, a funnel and some tubing, right? There's no polite way of saying this, but the tube goes where the sun don't shine, right? <laughs> Stick the tube up your bum hole there, right? <laughs> it's true. And you pour the coffee down the funnel, coffee goes down there, coffee goes up the tube, coffee goes up your backside, right? <laughs> and in your, in your colon, there's loads of blood vessels, and what happens is the coffee goes up there, and the caffeine from the coffee gets absorbed straight into your bloodstream, Right? gets pumped all around your body, gives you an instant caffeine rush. Right? If you're feeling low energy, it is amazing. Right? Really does wake you up. <laughs> yeah. Does, however, get you thrown out of Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> and 
I'll leave you one last thing, ladies and gentlemen, because you've been, you've been absolutely lovely. My name's Tony Cowards, by the way. If you do Facebook, Twitter and that, look me up on there, Tony Cowards. That would be lovely. And keep supporting this beautiful club here, ladies and gentlemen. It's genuinely one of the best in the country. And, uh, yeah, well done. One woo there. That's <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fantastic. Keep supporting him. You've got a brilliant headline out there, Joe. And I'll leave you with one last thing, right? Take this away with you. Amaze your friends. Because I realise this today, right? Realise this today. If you rearrange, if you rearrange the letters of postman, they get very annoyed. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I've been Tony Cards. Enjoy your show. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Ha ha ha!